push their head weights. And as a club maker, you can always weigh the club heads as well. Now, you may experience certain exceptions to every rule. For instance, Harico's power play Cayman Raw Power 3 wood weighs the same as a 5 wood by design. Therefore, you'd tip trim the shaft by the weight rather than the number engraved on the, the club head. In another case, our Acer XDS Insider Thriver, uh, Thriver edition only, is a driver that happens to weigh 210 grams, or the weight of a 3 wood. Therefore, to tip trim the shaft correctly, you'd follow the 3 wood column rather than the driver column. And lastly, you want to pay close attention to the trimming notes. Okay, here's... Okay. Again, you only want to use these if the directions tell you to. I want you to look at the highlighted areas. In trim note 2, it only applies to one shaft in our entire catalog, and that's the TT Light XL RNS Flex Iron Shaft. For others like trim note 1, it will apply to several shafts in the catalog. And this leads us to the next part. One of the most confusing but equally important notes that you may find on steel and some select graphite shafts is trim note 1 and that pertains to the bore type. This may seem confusing at first, but hopefully it'll make perfect sense once I explain it to you. In the early days of woods, when they were actually made out of wood, the shaft penetrated through the sole of the club. We call these through bores. Obviously, there's some extra work involved to finish the shaft and make it flush with the sole and put the plug in the hollow tip steel shaft to prevent formed debris from entering the shaft tip. Well, years later, a club maker figured out they could reduce the insertion depth so the shaft went down to the very bottom of the sole, but without going through. These were eventually called blind bore and saved time during the assembly phase. Well, in the late 1970s, when metal wood soon began to grow in popularity, aside from their different material and their shiny appearance, the uh, insertion depth of the shaft changed dramatically over the wooden day or wooden clubs of the day. Now wooden clubs needed that real deep insertion depth for their strength, while the metal woods didn't. So in those early metal woods, the, the shaft rusted above the ground by an inch and a half. And soon a new new terminology came out that was called standard metal wood bore or short bore in the lexicon of club making. And as we all know, there's nothing standard in the golf industry. But don't assume that standard metal wood or standard metal wood bore applies to all metal woods. Here lies the confusion. You have certain metal woods on the market that actually are bore through, like certain Callaway or Titleist golf clubs. You have some that are blind bore, and some that fall between the so-called standard metal wood and blind bore. What we're most concerned with is the bottom of board to ground line measurement. While I worked at Dynacraft in the early 90s, we broke it down even further. We had our M2 bore, and that was where a shaft penetrated to a point approximately one inch from the ground line. And then we had our M1 bore, where the shaft penetrated to a point approximately an inch and a half from the ground line. Now, Harico uses these terms today to describe the bore type in all our drivers and fairway woods. That information can be found in the specifications in either the print or the online catalog. Well, the vast majority of our drivers are M1, the fairways are M2 bores. But what happens if you're not using one of our heads? Well, there's an easy way to determine the bore type. You want to start by inserting the shaft into the hosel and then measure the overall length of the club. Next, subtract the raw length of the shaft, and then this yields the bottom of board to ground line dimension. For example, let's say we have a 46 inch shaft. With the shaft inserted all the way into the bore, and the head now measures 47 inches. Well, we know that the bottom of board to ground line measurement is an inch. But what happens if the measurement happened to be 47 and a quarter inches? 
or where the bottom of board of ground measurement is an inch and a quarter. Well, it's neither an M1 or an M2 bore, but don't worry about that. You want to cut off the additional inch and a quarter off the shaft tip, but only, and I mean only, if there is a trim note one or where the manufacturer calls for cutting additionally for the bore type. If not, don't worry about it. You just follow what the charts call for. Now let's go on to the irons, hybrids, and wedges. Most club makers don't even worry about these because the manufacturers don't design shafts for through bore irons and the industry doesn't usually deviate much from the so-called standard one inch bottom of bore to ground line measurement on these products. The only noticeable exception is the uh, True Temper TT Light XL RNS iron shaft. Um, and in this case, you'll be trimming additionally for non-bore through irons. Now, you may ask, what's a bore through iron? Well, the only example currently on the market is many of the Callaway irons, but not all of them. Again, you only have to worry about these unless you're uh, reshafting or repairing a broken shaft in one of these clubs. Where you may have to watch out for is adjusting to the, the trimming is when mixing and matching hybrids, irons, and specialty wedges with the same shaft. In a full set of irons or a full set of hy hybrids, the, the, the bottom of board to ground line measurement will remain normally constant. And for veteran or more skilled club makers, they're going to check the bottom of board to ground line measurement on each club anyway. Remember how we measure the bottom of board to ground line measurement. You insert the shaft in the hosel and measure the overall length of the club. Then you subtract the raw length of the shaft, and that yields the bottom of board to ground line dimension. For example, we have our 41-inch shaft. We insert it fully into the iron head, and it now measures 42 inches. We know that the uh, bottom of board to ground line measurement is 1 inch. But with the same shaft, and you insert it in a hybrid, it only measures 41.75 inches. The bottom of board to ground line measurement is only three quarters of an inch. Now, if you didn't adjust and reduce the tip trimming by that quarter of an inch, then it will make the shaft slightly stiffer. This small difference may not be so noticeable that many club makers will forego, the, forego this step. But if you're trying to establish uniform flex throughout your entire set, then you want to make this adjustment. Now, many club makers may use a different shaft in a hybrid than in the irons. In those cases, and the shafts don't match,